Twenty dollars. Still there in Buffalo, huh? Yeah. Well? You, uh, get my report on the big robbery case out here? Yes. It looks to me like you've done yourself proud again. Only if you're still there, how come your expense account included transportation back here to Hartford? I, uh, I'm afraid I got a little ahead of myself, Pat. Or maybe just batted a bit before you actually spent the money, is that it? Yeah, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> well, I think we can overlook it this time. After all, you recovered something over $400,000 that was stolen from that store. Well, let's say I found out where it went. Well, it's the same... What? You mean to say you didn't get that money back? Not yet. Oh, but Johnny... Now, look. Oh, no, no, don't come unglued, Pratt. I know where the money is. At least I'm pretty sure I do. Johnny, so it's a poor old man McNair's yacht in the lee of a point off the Canadian shore of Lake Erie. Now, listen. But with the big storm that's raging up over Lake Erie, well, it's impossible to go out and get him. Who's them? An employee, an ex-employee of the Emporium. The guy who took the money yeah, and his that... pal who helped him get away with it. Well, now, you wait until that storm is over. By that time, they'll be a hundred miles away. I'll be hidden away in some little cove there on the Canadian shore. Be what? What was that? Oh, nothing, Pat. Now, listen, I'll keep on it. You'd better. I'll bring him back here and the money or die in the attempts. You fail to get that money back and I'll gladly attend your funeral. Yeah, okay, Pat. I'll stay with it. Believe me, Johnny, you'd better. <laughs> CBS Radio brings you Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, as truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To the Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. Attention, Mr. Pat McCracken. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the further in Buffalo matter. What I hadn't told Pat over the phone was that the last minute the Coast Guard had stepped in, forbidding me to go after those crooks in a rented subchaser after all. And you know something? Because of that storm, I'm afraid they were right. In spite of the fact I'd already paid for that boat and could only get half of it back, I, uh, I'll put that down as a credit on this expense account. After all, it's on my American Express credit card. Anyhow, all I could do was sit around my hotel room and wait for the storm to quit. Yeah, sit and wait. Hmm. Come in, come in. Well, Dollar? Oh, hi, Mr. McGarry. So you couldn't go after those, uh, those criminals because of this storm? Well, sir, just as soon as it let that That's up, no I... reason for them to get away. Not with my $400,000. 421216 Yeah, look, Mr. McNair, Quite I... frankly, that amount of money doesn't mean very much to me. But to coin a phrase, it's the principle of the thing. Yeah, sure. So how can you sit idly here in this hotel and... Well, have you gotten in touch with the Canadian authorities? Yes, sir. And they, and they can't do any more than we can. Also, there's a, well, there's a kind of ticklish international situation. Here. What international situation? Well, if by any chance I should be wrong. Be wrong? About what? Well, I mean, well, look, after all, the only evidence against John Harker and his pals so far is the circumstantial count. I thought you were absolutely certain they took the money. I am. As sure as I can be until I get my hands on that money. I had all the faith in the world in John Harker. Then you came along and destroyed it. Destroyed it with your, your, your theory that he and some friend of his committed that robbery. Mr. McNair. Well, just let me tell you something, young man. You go out there to wherever he is on my yacht and you find him. But when you do, you'd better also find proof that he stole that money. I'll do everything I can. Because if you don't, if you or anybody else finds out that he is innocent, Dollar, I'll ride you out of Buffalo on a rail. At this point, I was feeling real good, real happy. Everybody was being so nice to me. I was just about to blow expense account item seven on room service for a bottle of scotch and a couple of quarts of soda when the phone rang. Johnny Dollar. Murphy at the Coast Guard, Dollar. Yeah, Murphy. Look, I'm still sorry about having had to stop your chase across the lake, but the old man would have had my scalp. It's all right, Murph. Nothing you could do about it. Anyhow, if you've been following the radio reports on that storm, 
Well, you might have got yourself into a lot of trouble out there. Yeah, I guess so. And you'd never been able to board a yacht in it anyway. So, you have any ideas? Yeah, I just uh, received a report from our meteorological station. Oh. That storm's going down just about as fast as it built up. So if you want me to arrange a boat for you to go out there, uh, just as soon as we deem it safe. Why? What? Well, the minute the storm is over, the boys in that yacht will start moving. After all, they got 400 grand they've got to stash away somewhere. Oh, yeah, that's true. So by the time I could sail over to where they've been riding out the storm, Lord knows where they could get to. Yeah, but now, Dollar... But now, wait a minute. Yeah, Murph, I just got me a wild idea. Wild enough to work. Oh? The storm is breaking up now? Yeah, it's beginning to. Then, mister, by the time that yacht is able to get underway, I'm going to be right on top of those guys. Huh? How, Dollar? Just remember what I said. Right on top of them. Expense account item seven, three bucks and a quarter for a taxi out to the municipal airport. Along the way, I noticed the rain was letting up, the wind was dying down. At one side of the airport, I found exactly what I was looking for. Within a couple of minutes, was in a little office talking with Tinker Barnum, owner of the Barnum Flying Service. Sure, a dollar, complete equipment for it. Winch, line, slings, everything. Good. You see, we not only give a lot of demonstrations, instruction, that sort of thing, but now and then a Coast Guard calls on us to help with an actual rescue at sea. What'd you say your price is? $300. That includes me at the control. Okay, then it's a deal. Okay, we'll take off just as soon as the wind goes down a few more knots. Oh, uh-huh, sorry, Tank. We gotta take off right away. But if the wind starts blowing up again... It won't, and I got that straight from the Coast Guard. You're sure of that? I'm sure, so let's go... Well, I don't know if the tower will give me clearance. Then forget the tower. Well, well, now, wait a minute. Four hundred? But I could lose my life in this dollar, get in a lot of trouble. Well, there's nothing else taking off from the field right now. I know, but that flight that just came in had a pretty rough time of it. Tell the tower it's an emergency, a rescue operation if you have to, but please, let's get going. Now, listen, it could be very dangerous. All right, that's a chance we'll have to take. Five hundred? Five fifty? Uh, I keep talking. Well, after all, it's 400,000 bucks, this thing. What? 600 bucks. Take it or leave it. No, okay, Dollar, let's go out and warm up the old windmill. Attaboy. It was my first ride in a helicopter, and brother, what an introduction. I've been aboard regular planes in rough weather lots of times. But the way that wind tossed us around, picked us up and let us down, and with nothing but the broad wind chopped surface of Lake Erie below us. Well, it was an experience to say the least. For the first half hour, Tink was fighting the controls every inch of the way, and the gray, ominous scudding clouds that raced by overhead. Then, all of a sudden, the clouds left us. The sun came out in all its glory. The most welcome sight I've seen in years. The air calmed down. Then finally standing out clearly under us was the Canadian shoreline. Look ahead, Dollar, over to the left a bit. Yeah, I think. That neck of land, that peninsula sticking out into the lake. Yeah, I see it. Long point. And the yacht was supposed to be riding out the storm in the lee of it. I don't see it. The lee side would be the... I do. Look, moving along the far side of the point. That's a cruiser, Johnny, but is it the right one? Come on, take us down to her. Right. Meantime, I'll get the sling ready so you can drop me down in the deck. Right. I still don't know how Tink figured he could pilot that helicopter and at the same time lower me to the deck of the yacht so he can handle a winch. But he swore he'd done it before in rescue operations and he could do it again. He made a couple of close passes and I was able to identify John Harker at the helm, a tough-looking character standing beside him. So it had to be McNair's yacht. Then I suddenly realized there were not only two of them, but they both knew who I was, knew all about my interest in the robbery. I could be at a slight disadvantage. Sure, Dollar. They shoot you dead before you even hit the deck. Okay. I can't remember when a lie has ever paid off or even worked. I've got to try one this time. Well, listen, we could simply keep a line on them and find out where they go. Yeah, and what happens when this ex-beater runs out of gas? Yeah. Oh, well, I can uh, radio the Canadian Coast Guard. Oh, no, by the time they get through the necessary red tape to hold those boys and get here from wherever the nearest station is. Yeah, I see what you mean. Okay, then, Johnny, open the door. Use this megaphone. Thanks. Yeah. I'll uh, hang around over them. Right. Okay, 
Hey, he can hear you. I still want you to know the police have found the man who did the robbery. They shut him down. He waves okay. Yeah. Parker, they haven't found the money yet. McNeer says you'll have to blow from the grave. And the place are all the way to Rossville. Hey, what was that, Johnny? You get that, Harker? I said that... Look, I'll drop on down there. Stop your engines, and I'll drop down to your deck on a line. You get that? Emotion's okay, Johnny, to come ahead. Set me down there, Tinker, and make it gentle, will you? You got your gun real handy? Right. I still don't like this, but down you go. under that copter, hoping I'd hit the deck of the boat below was no fun. It was a pretty small target, and the yacht was still popping heavily. I think was an expert, and a couple of minutes later, I saw the deck slowly coming up to me. Bunk and 
walk up to the front of the camp. Go ahead. Don't forget I've got this gun on. Yeah, the copter was going back to shore. Time was running out. Then I saw them. a duplicate set of controls there at the front of the cabin. Steering wheel, throttle, everything. Go ahead, Dollar. Keep your hands up over your head. Up high. Rising off the bunk, my hands over my head, I half stumbled as though from the motion from the boat. I lurched against the wheel and grabbed it and swung it hard up the board. Hey! The boat swung around crazy. Hey! What do you think you did? Hey, let go of that wheel! Lousy shot, Billy! Shot! What's the matter? Billy! Billy, what's happened down there? Plenty, Harker. If you want some of the same. Wrong, Dollar. Dead wrong. Because I have a gun, too. Not another step. I see what you mean. Too bad you didn't take Billy's when you... Billy? Billy? Okay. Okay, Harker. I'm a okay. But if you think I'm going to wait any longer to kill this guy, you're crazy. Okay, Billy. Go ahead and kill him. You know that. Look, look, look. That cop. What? What's coming right out of him? Smash into us. Stop him. Kill him. You bet I will. Oh, you fool. The pilot and the cop to the fly boy. Shoot him. Right. Ow! My last chance. They turned to fire a tinker up in the copter. I lunged against Billy, shoved him over the side. <laughs> account total, including an even thousand bucks for Tinker Barnum, and please don't argue about it, plus the trip back to Hartford, plus the previous charges you haven't yet paid me for, $1,800 even. And believe me, it's a bargain. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, two beautiful girls. One of them a sweetheart. And one of them a killer. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Robinson, James McCallion, Dick Krenner, Junius Matthews, and Gil Stratton.